It's the greatest buzz in the world back in the winter. It's just absolute adrenaline from the moment that the traps rise. You feel like a superhero, sort of Superman, you can knock walls down. It feels as good as that. This is our family, all, these, all the dogs we bred are our family. These are my babies. People think I'm mad. They say, they're your children? I say, yeah, but they're four-legged ones. Even after 60 years, I am still excited with greyhound racing. It's my life. It's the most honourable profession, bookmaker to punter, in the world. On the Wolverstone mornings, I get the racing post, I sit in the chair with, with my cup of tea and my pens, and I go through the, each race individually. And then I put my own prices down, what I think the dogs represent. When I look at my paper, I'm trying to find dogs that are running well at that time. I'm looking for something that's a little bit hidden up, that might, might have got in trouble in its first run. I'm looking for new dogs, obviously. That's what makes me just that little bit, not being big-headed, me that little bit better than the rest. The thought of picking something as well that no one else fancies, and that's an even bigger buzz. Um, because then you do feel like master of the universe. I couldn't feel the same passion for a dog that I've bought as the ones that we've bred. People say to me, oh, did you see that five dog or that three dog? I say, no, I only saw my dog. I'm only, my eyes are on my dog. The, the winning bit is different class, you know. It's unbelievable. Feeling is unbelievable. And then once they've won for you, you got, that's it, you, you've got them, haven't you? You're hooked, haven't you? you? They've done you. You've got to end up with a pub full of dogs. Oh, it's a nice bit of sirloin steak. It's for my Kate. She doesn't like the same things two days running. So one night I shall cook our stewing steak. Another night she'll have mince meat. Another night she'll have chicken. But she likes it with a bit of gravy. She don't like it cooked too much. She likes a bit of uh, rawness in it. Dogs come first. John comes second. Beans. It's our life. This is what we, we, we get up every morning for. For looking forward to going to Wolfenstow. If Wolfenstow closed, I don't know, we'd be empty because it is the Rolls Royce of dog racing. It's a smashing place, you know. Everything's so classy and everything's done properly, you know. Right from the, the dogs right down to the staff and the, the gradings, everything's perfect. The plan for tonight is to smash these bookmakers, spank their bums as hard as I can. My experience gives me that little edge. That little edge that is needed, I've got. As I walk through the gates, I'm 88. And every stride I drop a year. Until I get to this pitch here, I'm 68. And I shall be 68 for the next two or three hours. And then as I start to walk out again, the years go back on again. So as I get into the car, I'm 88. If I've lost, 98. Sangria, <laughs> melon twister, that's got to be a drink somewhere. Mine's going to be kind of busy. I've been here uh, loads of times actually. It's been a pen night here, um, out with people I used to work with. It's just a good place to come and have a drink, have some dinner and just waste your money.
Where other people who've got a nine to five job can say, well, in, in 15 years, 20 years time, my mortgage is gonna be paid and this is gonna be mine. I can't see past the end of the week. Nothing's planned. I'm a gambler. It's easy for me. I've got a hundred times more knowledge than the people I'm taking on. They're minnows to me in, in brain terms. They're, they're minnows. I, I just look at them as ants on the floor. The master. I didn't think I'd be walking yesterday, I swear to God. I didn't think I'd be walking, Chase. I couldn't get out of bed. This is my friend Dougie. We'll be uh, doing battle in about uh, 45 minutes time. You're right and all. And he always beats me. <laughs> Why? Because he's too clever. Oh, if everybody was like him, I'd be skin. I can't say no more than that, can I? It's because he's too clever. Certain people, you can take a thousand pound bet from it, doesn't worry you. Other people, well, you're not too sure. <laughs> These are what I call professionals. The ordinary person is an amateur, but certain people are professionals. And you have to be careful of the professionals, obviously. And we come out fighting. Absolutely. Absolutely. We've, we've had a few rounds. We have had a few rounds. <laughs> we've had a few rounds. These are the proper dog people. They're the Arden core of dog racing, proper, proper dog people. They're not so much drinking people, as much talking about dogs and what happened and what's going to happen next. And it's just a, you know, it's a way from everything else that's going on in the world, really. We are a little mob of people that really like what we're doing. This is my youngest son, Michael. He looks after all the money. He's the sort of chancellor, so we say. And he knows all the punters. And he's a big, strong boy, and he frightens some of them off very well. <laughs> and I have my other son, who is on the front. He keeps me informed what is happening in the market. He, he keeps an eye on the prices that the other bookmakers are going, and he signals to me how the prices are fluctuating, otherwise you're betting blind. People are not going to come in with me and take three to one when they can get seven to two with another bookmaker. Then I have the clerk who records all the bets. And then when I'm dead and gone, uh, the boys will be here doing it. So there'll always be that name here. As long as there's Walthamstow, Walthamstow Stadium, we'll always be there. We'll always be there. He's putting a bet on for everyone. Oh, okay. But I want to see who he's putting on because he apparently knows something. <laughs> yeah, he's clever. We just do. We choose the nice dog or the favourite number or the nice name. Okay. And how does it? Does it say anything about where, like, what the? Yeah, but. Do you know? Immaterial. Just roll with it and hope for the best. <laughs> Jace, I've got a bit of monkey on for him. I can't put money on directly because the bookmakers won't take my bets. They know if the, I'm seen running up and down the line, there'd probably be more people coming in to follow my tips. There's people at the track who will just be watching what I'm doing. They know I'm good at what I do and they will be following me in. I'll have to have my minions putting my bets on. You go one side, oh, just in the other side and Jason in the middle, right? I send one in one direction, I send one in another. Sometimes I might send three or four down. Tell me that price, I'll get on, Joyce, don't worry. All right, they've got They're going in to put me money on for me. I'm having a thousand pound on it in total. But there's better bets coming up. This is this is the hors d'oeuvres, we're going on to the main course in a minute. Five dogs, 48. Eight, eight, seven, 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 First drink is a pound, second drink is two pounds, third drink maybe five pounds. The more I'm drunk, the more money I'll bet. Five to win! That's girly betting for you. They're the only two runners in it, one and four. It'd be hard for anything else to win. It's all over now. We've only got to turn left. Just leave us alone. Leave us alone. Leave us alone. Come on, number four. Oh, I got number two to win. That's all right, Just. They can 
fold the break now. Stays longer than the mother-in-law, it's waiting. They know what they're doing, yeah. as opposed to us. Because this, this is... This is like the nice bit, and then there's the normal bit where you can jeans and trainers kind of thing. Chicken in a basket. Yeah, chicken, chicken in a basket, cheap night out. But all the men there, um, they literally come down here every night for racing, and they will bet all their money, and they they know what they're talking about, and they hate girls like me that go in there saying, "Oh, I like this name." <laughs> That's the first good bet on the card, so it's a good start. We're up and running, gentlemen. It's a good start. Do you like it? Go sit down then. Sit down. Yeah. As you can see, she's not related to a brand. The brand chases her. This is Lug Hill Casey. She won quite a few races. And uh, she came into the season and we decided to breed it with a good dog because we're going to put our heart and soul in this, you know, we really are. And uh, we read that uh, Brentley was the fastest dog in the world, so we thought, well, here do. So we um, investigated into it and we found that we could buy a file of his Harry um, and have an artificially done. This Harry Monk, and it? it's, it's a Cockney slime word, you know, that buy a little file of Harry. And he's never phoned her up to see how she is either. He never kissed her or nothing. <laughs> and uh, she's had some smashing pups. We've got all of them. And that was just over £2,000. If you wanted to do the same job now, being be in the reason of five and a half of it. But she, they are, it is sought after now, that sort of Harry. Bakers will not be out of sleep tonight. They feel like they've been with 12 rounds with Mike Tyson in his prime after pepping with me. I think I'm optimistic. There's more misery to come from. Misery. They won't be out of sleep tonight after I've finished with them. I think I'm optimistic. Now you've got a smaller core of people, mainly would be betting the same dogs. We'll all see the same thing really at the end of the day. I'll tell you what, Fox might be trying to beat us to the punch. Oh, all right. Down you going to Dougie? Oh, if you don't move, he's yeah, not back. Yeah, but is he day. taking it any price? Yeah, I said. Jerry, don't want to bet under six, six to four. Yeah, well, look, he's not going to move unless you move, Tom. I'll still back it at five to four, but not for no lump sum. Jerry, he's not going to be a Yeah. Six to four, yeah, that's right. We'll get on whatever we're trying to try and get to get off at 1200. Right, I'm going to try and get 1200 quid on with uh, Lambert and O'Gorman. If you've got any overs, you haven't got it all on, just try and get some. Well, it's got to drop six to four. All right. My men are heading off down the stairs now. A couple of them going one end, one's going into Dougie. A couple of them ready for the middle, and we're sending someone else into Brazil on the end. Joe, monkey to fight free dog. Terrible. It's not a bad race, is it? Hey, look at it. Look. You were right. The fox got in before us. Terry, known as the fox, he's someone who does the same thing as what I does. He's a very good judge, well respected judge. You might have heard Dougie talking about him earlier, but uh, he went in and took the uh, price before we got to it. The dog's been backed off the ball basically from two to one down to five to four. Uh, we missed the two to one, we've had to take seven to four and six to four. There you are. Let it win. <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to put 20 pence on number one, 20 pence on number two, and what haven't I bet on? Um, four. Two pounds on number five. Okay, we did. You had it here first. Wait, she did it. How did she do it? How did you do it? How did you do it, Denise? Pound each way. Pound each way. Pound. We win means. if we win, and we win if we lose. Wasn't that it? I think I made that up. I watch them uh, load them in the traps. And then it's like the butterflies are going, the heart starts pounding, and then they ring the bell. And then all eyes are fixed on my dog coming out of that trap.
in the frame. She absolutely stamps. Unfortunately, we missed the prize on that one again. You've got to start getting in for the Fox boys. Yes, I didn't even right. see him, Slippery. Where, Where was he? He met this pick from under the toe ball. I don't worry about thing, he gets in before we'll be us every time. Anymore, is no, not anymore. We'll be doing the Yeah, game. yeah, yeah. Well, he just, just slipped in before us. It's one of them things. It's one of them things. Oh, about level the last race. The race before was no good. That was a bad race. When I first started bookmaking, we had 40 or 50 bookmakers at Walthamstow and we dealt in thousands of punters. Now we've got seven and we deal in hundreds of punters. It's very, very hard for the bookmakers to the point now, what, what's happened, where there'd be, even five years ago, there'd be more what I'd call mug punters, what a, what a bookmaker would call a mug punter. That's not the right expression to use, mug punters. Uh, uh, they're calling mug punters because they're not judges to that extent. They're ordinary punters who come there, look at their programme, look at their papers, and they say, well, I fancy A or B or C or D, uh, and he'll have his fiver or tenner on that. Then people are dying in the game like, like flies, and what you're left with is a hardcore of, of punters like myself who know what they're looking at. It's a different clientele what they're catering for now. It's, um, they're looking more for people who are going to go into their restaurants, go into their bars. Bookmakers know that they're in a dying business. The future for, for on-course betting is bleak. There's not enough punters about now. That is the problem. When I was a youngster, we had dog tracks, we had dance halls, and we had cinemas. That's all we had. Today, we've got everything you can think of. I'm so I see people today with little telephones in their hand. They can see pictures, they can make pictures, they do what they like. I, I look at them and I think, I must be a dinosaur. I'm like, I'm a thing of the past, really. <laughs> We got a little R8 Kate in the last race, which she um, gives her all. Very excited about that. We think this dog has got lots of potential. We were hoping he might even win the arc or the derby or something. Is that good, you know? So tonight will be the turning point. All their dreams go down the drain hole, or you know what I mean? Or another one in the pub, I suppose. <laughs> when the bell goes, and I know that they're coming out from the paddock. That's when I start getting butterflies. You're on edge till they come out the traps. And what with my, um, I haven't got a posh voice, have I? Like my Cockney voice. I don't know what I sound like, to be honest. It'd probably frighten me if I heard myself shout. <laughs> I'm going to try and get on as much as we can possibly get on here. So we'll be going down in two or three hits here, probably. Right, here we go again, the last event. We've got to badly get it a win, I think. We'll probably have about two and a half thousand pounds on between the lot of us. You can get us uh, any order, as long as they come in first, second and first. You'll hear some shouting there.
Hello, Tel. What's happening, Doug? Oh, disaster. Disaster. Absolute disaster. Yeah. One of those nights. Yeah. One of those nights. You owe me two and a half. Oh, you're 250. Fine. Eight and a quarter. Yeah, no that's problem. Problem. Uh, eight. There you go, sir. A little bit of change to come. Thank you. Cheers, you. No, every race is, a, is good. You have to win on some, you have to lose on others. As long as you keep going, that's the main thing. Where's my little star? You haven't got three quid. You, you, she ran a bloody blinder. To see my dog win is unbelievable. It's just, I talk about it for days and days. And we can't wait to get up there Sunday morning with a roast beef sandwich for him. It's smashing, the feeding is unbelievable. She's bleeding handsome, isn't she? Not as handsome as your brother. She's pretty. She's my pretty baby. Another winner for Jerry. <laughs> That's it. The night has been very, very bad, unfortunately. But what can you do? Hey, what can you do? Chalk the tip and swallow the cue. We back the winner. <laughs> That's three, 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 three good bets, three winners now. Three Chicken dinner. <laughs> Bookmakers know that their sons and are not going to be able to carry on the business like they could have done 20 or 30 years ago. A pitch at Wolverhampton Stadium was like gold dust then. Today, who really wants a pitch at Wolverhampton? Because there's people like me about. It's impossible for them to take anyone on like me. But when the bookmakers go, I've got to go because there's no, there's no avenues for me once the bookmakers are gone. I can't speak for poor Dougie, <laughs> but I should imagine that uh, he went home with his, his pockets not as full as they was when he came. <laughs> yeah, bye bye. Night. So what can we do? Go home and go to bed and pray that next week is better than last week. <laughs> Good night, gentlemen. Good night. Been a pleasure to know you. Ten forty five tomorrow morning we'll be on the plane to Las Vegas. We Gambling, the shows. <laughs> the shows. And anything else we can't declare at this moment. <laughs> Alright then, Joe. Right, we'll see, see you in the morning. morning. Right. See, you morning. Six, yeah? see you around. Right. There's no track like Wolfenstone. It's been my life since I was a little kid. If Wolvenstow closed, it would be heartbreaking for me. I would just stand in the middle of that track. Tears would just roll down my cheeks. It's been my whole life. People say to me, where would you rather be? In the Bahamas or at Wolvenstow Stadium? I want to be at Wolvenstow Stadium. Your life would be empty with no dogs just did.